In this retro anime review, I'm going to be looking at Ryu Seiki or Dragon Century. This is an OVA released in 1988. It consists of two episodes, each 30 minutes in length. It was directed by Kiyoshi Fukumoto and animated by the studio AIC. I'm not completely sure about the source of the animation. I've seen several sources online that claim that it was based off of a manga but I was unable to track down this particular manga definitively. There is a manga that I found titled Ryu Seiki that several websites online claim to be the original source material for this OVA, but after looking into this manga, it appears it began publication in 1993, five years after the OVA, and the story in the manga isn't very similar to the story in the OVA. So whether this OVA has an original story or if it has source material elsewhere is still a bit inconclusive. The OVA consists of two episodes. The stories are related but take place on a different timeline, and the feeling and setting of each episode are very different from each other, being so different that to me it felt like they almost felt like two separate OVAs rather than parts of the same series. The first episode takes place in 1991 in Japan in a more real world type of setting where the second episode takes place in the distant future. In the first episode everything is normal until dragons begin to show up. When they appear they are attacked by the military and the dragons fight back in self-defense causing casualties to the military and destruction to the surroundings. After this the military hunts down every single dragon that appears and tries to destroy it. The main character of the first episode is a young girl named Rico who witnesses the military fighting against a dragon that has appeared near her hometown. She sees the military killing the dragon but sees that the dragon has dropped an egg that it was protecting. The egg cracks open revealing a baby dragon inside and she takes the baby dragon home and protects it from the military and then she begins to raise the baby dragon herself in secret. One day demons appear in the city and start taking over people and possessing them and transforming them into horrible man-eating creatures. This gives us some of my favorite scenes of the entire OVA when we see the transformation scenes of the people possessed by the demons. These transformations are super gruesome and pretty creative and some of the best animation that we see in this whole OVA. And actually the whole reason why I watched this OVA the first time I saw it was because of one of these scenes that I saw posted online one time in the past. It was a scene where this woman transforms into some spider creature and I thought the scene looked so cool that I just had to go watch the entire OVA right when I saw that. Rico's dragon, who she has named Carmine, has now grown up a bit and now has the ability to speak. Carmine explains to Rico that the dragons were actually sent to this world to protect humanity and were sent ahead to protect them from the demons that were going to show up. But the humans fought against the dragons and killed them all off so now there are no dragons left to protect humanity from the demons. Rico decides that she wants to fight against the demons and try to save humanity from them, and Carmine agrees to help her for her sake. Carmine and Rico then have a big fight against the King of the Demons, which spans roughly the last third of the first episode. Eventually, at the end of the fight, Rico decides to sacrifice herself in order to save humanity and defeat the Demon King, which she manages to do successfully, and as her last request, she asks Carmine to continue to protect humanity even after she's gone, in case the Demon King returns and tries to destroy humanity again. And that leads us into the second episode, which takes place hundreds of years in the future in a post-apocalyptic type of setting. At the end of the first episode, we see a portal open up and we see many dragons fly through it, entering into the human world. Presumably from that point on, humanity lived alongside the dragons. In this future setting, humans and dragons do live alongside each other. This setting seems to be a bit post-apocalyptic in that there's a lot of destroyed cityscapes and overgrown nature around them, and humanity seems to be divided into smaller, less populated groups. In some ways the architecture and the technology that they have seems futuristic, but in some ways it looks more primitive. This episode has a new human protagonist. This episode opens with a girl named Rulisha climbing a tower where Carmine, the dragon from the first episode, resides. In this world society, if a person takes a dragon's horn, that person becomes a dragon's master. So Rulisha is climbing Carmine's tower in order to take his horn and get him to help her get revenge on her father's killer. 
She reaches the top of the tower and tries to take Carmine's horn, but he doesn't allow her to. When he sees her resolve, he's reminded of Rico, and then he allows her to take his horn and agrees to aid her in tracking down her father's killer. Her father was killed by a black dragon in these types of cage fights that are held where humans and dragons pair up together to fight against another team. Rulisha and Carmine enter into these fights to try to find the dragon that killed her father. Eventually they find this man in the black dragon and they find out that this is actually a form of the demon king returning again to try to conquer humanity. So then Rulisha and Carmine have to team up and fight against the demon king just like Rico and Carmine did back in the first episode. This was a pretty enjoyable OVA to me. It remained pretty entertaining through its entire runtime, especially with the two episodes being very different. It really felt like a change of pace and kept things pretty interesting. The stories and characters weren't anything too special. They were kind of surface level and simple, which is to be expected with such a short runtime, with each episode only being 30 minutes each and a total runtime of one hour between the two storylines. Personally, I kind of enjoyed the first episode more, but since both episodes are very different, I can understand someone liking either one more than the other. The animation is pretty decent throughout. It's nothing too special, but it has some pretty good action scenes, and the monster transformations in the first episode were definitely the high point of the entire OVA. I thought those were the best scenes, and nothing else really lived up to it too much, but most of the action sequences were pretty well done, and were carried out pretty well in an entertaining way, and the OVA has the level of violence and gore that's kind of typical of the OVAs from that time period. I enjoyed the atmosphere of the first episode. The first episode felt much more dark and serious, animated with a lot more dark colors and dark reds, giving everything a more shadowy, sinister feel to it. The first episode also has a lot more gruesome imagery and gore than the second episode does. The second episode seems to have much more of a lighter atmosphere to it, with a lot brighter colors being used and less shadows. The setting of the second episode feels much more of a fantasy setting rather than a setting of an apocalyptic type setting. I thought it was a pretty drastic change in tone, but the second episode setting is pretty entertaining. I like the world design, I think the creatures and the storyline of the girl trying to get revenge for her father is pretty interesting. I thought both episodes were pretty decent. As I said, the story is pretty simple in both episodes, but is decent for the short runtime. You can't really expect too much from a 30 minute storyline that's trying to wrap up an entire story just in that runtime with no sequels. One thing that's a bit frustrating that might annoy some people is the ending ends on a bit of a cliffhanger and doesn't complete the story. This is a recurring problem for a lot of these old OVAs where they just had a short runtime and never got sequels or more extra episodes to finish things off. In this case, in the second episode, they defeat the Demon King and then he almost immediately rises again and the dragons have to band together and fight against him to save the world. And the second episode drops off right as that battle is going to start, so we never see that or see how the story ends. It almost felt like there could have been a third episode to wrap things up, but it never came. I'm going to give this one 3 stars out of 5. It's not an all-time classic or a must-see or anything like that, but it's pretty entertaining and I think it's worth watching, and in my opinion it's an above average anime. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.